on a quiet September morning in Winder, Georgia, the serenity of Appalachie High School was shattered. What was supposed to be a routine day turned into a nightmare, leaving the community grappling with unimaginable loss. Winder, a peaceful town with a population of 18,000, had always been known for its tight-knit community. Appalachie High School is a public high school located in Barrow County, Georgia, about 50 miles northeast of Atlanta. It is part of the Barrow County School District and has about 1,900 enrolled students. Christian Angulo and Mason Schirmerhorn, both 14, were vibrant students with bright futures. Christian was known for his caring nature, while Mason had an upbeat attitude and was looking forward to a vacation at Walt Disney World. Christina Iremi, a 53-year-old math teacher, was a dedicated educator who dedicated her life to shaping the minds and hearts of students. Richard Aspinwall, a 39-year-old math teacher and defensive coordinator of the Appalachie Wildcats football team, was a beloved figure in both the classroom and on the field. On that fateful day, chaos erupted as Colt Gray, a 14-year-old student armed with a clone of the infamous AR-15 semi-automatic rifle, entered Appalachie High School. Colin Gray, the father of the 14-year-old accused of killing two teachers and two students at Appalachie High School, has been arrested and charged with second-degree murder, according to the Georgia Bureau of Investigation. GBI. Mr. Gray, 54, faces two counts of second-degree murder, four counts of involuntary manslaughter, and eight counts of cruelty to children. GBI Director Chris Hosey stated that these charges are directly related to Mr. Gray's actions, including allowing his son access to a weapon. Mr. Gray is currently in custody, and further details about the case were not provided during the news conference. Here's a detailed timeline of the events surrounding the incident. 8.30 a.m. The school day begins with first period classes starting as usual. 10 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. chaos erupts in a second period class when a sophomore reports that another student burst in yelling for everyone to get down. The situation quickly escalates as detailed by the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. At 10.23 a.m., law enforcement starts receiving emergency calls reporting an active shooter on campus. The gravity of the situation becomes evident as officials are alerted. Responding to the reports, law enforcement officers are dispatched to the scene, aiming to address the unfolding crisis. At 10.45 a.m., in response to the incident, the school sends a message to parents stating, Appalachie High School is currently in a hard lockdown after reports of gunfire. Law enforcement is on site. Please do not come to the school while officers work to secure the area, according to the Athens Banner Herald. At 11 a.m., a heavy police presence is noted on the school property, as reported by CBS affiliate WayNF. The situation remains tense as officers work to control the scene. And at 11.20 a.m., Students are evacuated to the football field behind the school as a precautionary measure. This move is part of the school's response to ensure the safety of everyone present. At 11.56 a.m., the Barrow County Sheriff's Office confirms that one suspect is in custody. The arrest marks a critical point in managing the immediate aftermath of the shooting. At 12.07 p.m., the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, GBI, announces its involvement in the response to the school shooting, indicating the expansion of the investigation into the incident. At 1.15 p.m. during a news conference, Barrow County Sheriff Judd Smith notes that the investigation into the shooting will take several days to fully understand and resolve. At 2.13 p.m., the GBI provides an update on the situation, confirming that four people were killed and nine others were hospitalized with injuries. Appalachie High School, which has approximately 1,900 students in grades 9 through 12, is situated in Winder, Georgia, about 30 miles from Athens. The school, which opened in 2000, is one of two high schools in the Barrow County school system. In light of the events, Barrow County schools have been placed on lockdown as a precaution. 
Superintendent Dallas LaDuff has announced that schools will be closed for the remainder of the week, and grief counseling services will be available to support the affected students and families. The arrest follows revelations about the teenage suspect's fascination with past mass shootings and his father's ownership of several firearms, including a military-style rifle similar to the one used in the attack. Family members have shared insights into the teenager's troubled home life with his grandfather, Charles Polymus, attributing the boy's actions to his environment, and his aunt, Annie Brown, expressing that the adults in his life failed him. The investigation has also highlighted missed opportunities to prevent the attack. Over a year ago, sheriff's officers interviewed the suspect regarding threats made on social media about school shootings, but found no conclusive evidence linking him to those posts, according to an investigative report. Victims of the attack included Mason Shermerhorn and Christian Angulo, both 14-year-old students, as well as teachers Christina Iremi and Richard Aspinwall. Nine other individuals were hospitalized with injuries, but are expected to recover. The accused shooter, Colt Gray, 14, faces four counts of felony murder and may face additional charges. His first court appearance is scheduled for Friday at 8.30 a.m. His aunt has stated that he was actively seeking help for his mental health issues. The weapon used in the attack was a black AR-15 style semi-automatic rifle. Records from a 2022 eviction indicate that Mr. Gray owned a black AR-15 at that time, although it was later returned to him. AR-15s are commonly used in mass shootings. During a search of the suspect's room, police discovered evidence of his interest in mass shootings, including the 2018 Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School massacre which claimed 17 lives. Previously, Mr. Gray had assured sheriff's investigators that his son did not have unrestricted access to firearms. He expressed anger over the possibility of his son making online threats about a school shooting, fearing it would lead to the confiscation of all guns, according to an interview. The halls that once echoed with laughter and learning now reverberated with screams and terror. The quick response of teachers and students became acts of bravery amidst the horror. Christian Angulo and Mason Shermerhorn were among those who fell victim, alongside teachers Christina Iremi and Richard Aspinwall. The tragedy unfolded rapidly, leaving the community in shock and grief. The investigation authorities arrived swiftly, but the damage had already been done. The school was locked down as officers began their investigation. The community was left in shock, with vigils and memorials springing up to honor the victims. The grief-stricken town struggled to come to terms with the tragedy, with many questioning how such an atrocity could occur in their once safe haven. The investigation revealed troubling details about the suspect's background and the weapons involved. Search for the Suspect Colt Gray, the suspect, had a troubled past marked by interest in previous mass shootings and access to firearms. Despite earlier warnings and investigations, the tragedy unfolded with devastating consequences. The search for answers began, with the community and law enforcement piecing together how this horrific event could have been prevented. Reports emerged of Colt's fascination with past massacres and the possession of a military-style rifle by his father. As the tragic shooting unfolded at Appalachie High School in Winder, Georgia on Wednesday morning, students' desperate text messages to their parents revealed the raw fear and uncertainty they experienced. Just before 10.30 a.m., Becky Vanderwalt received a chilling message from her son, Henry, a junior at the school. I think there's a school shooting, Henry texted. We heard gunshots and the police shouting, we're all in hard lockdown. Eight minutes later, Henry sent a brief but heartfelt message. I love you. Aaron Clark, another parent of an Appalachian High student, received a distressing text from her son, Ethan. School shooting RN. I'm scared, Ethan wrote. Pillows, I'm not joking. When Clark replied that she was leaving work to be with him, Ethan's response was simple yet moving. I love you. 
Sonia Turner, who had just returned home after dropping off her daughter Abby at the school, received a troubling message from Abby. There's a real lockdown, Abby texted from her biology class. IDK how to explain it. I heard shots but I don't anymore. The shooting, allegedly carried out by a 14-year-old student, resulted in four deaths and nine injuries. The victims include two teachers, Richard Aspinwall, 39, and Christina Iremi, 53, as well as two students, Mason Shermerhorn and Christian Angulo, both 14. The suspect faces multiple charges, including four counts of felony murder. Turner, who also has a nine-year-old son, immediately contacted her husband, urging him to rush to the school. It's real. Go, go, go. For the next hour, she remained glued to her phone, trying to ensure her daughter's safety while offering comfort through text messages. Where are you hiding? Turner texted Abby, who replied, I'm behind a long desk. Turner continued to check on her daughter's location and advised her to stay still and pray. No, I can't move. I'm not allowed to move, Abby responded. Turner's texts were filled with instructions and prayers, providing reassurance amid the chaos. Despite the trauma, both Ethan Clark and Abby Turner survived the shooting, along with Turner's other daughter, Isabella. As the investigation continues, these texts offer a poignant glimpse into the harrowing experience of those caught in the violence. The legal proceedings brought some measure of accountability as Colt Gray faced multiple charges, including felony murder. His father, Colin Gray, was also charged with serious offenses related to the incident. The trial highlighted the systemic issues that allowed such a tragedy to occur, sparking discussions about gun control and mental health. The town of Winder remained in mourning, seeking justice and healing in the wake of the devastating loss. The White House confirmed that President Joe Biden was briefed on the shooting by Liz Sherwood Randall, the Homeland Security Advisor. The administration is committed to continuing coordination with federal, state, and local officials as more information becomes available. Vice President Kamala Harris expressed gratitude to first responders and emphasized that such tragedies should not be commonplace. Attorney General Merrick Garland conveyed his profound sadness regarding the incident and its impact on those affected. During the afternoon press briefing, White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre highlighted the administration's focus on gun control measures, including universal background checks. Georgia Governor Brian Kemp expressed his condolences via Twitter and urged Georgians to pray for the safety of students in classrooms. Atlanta Mayor Andre Dickens also extended his thoughts and prayers to those affected and offered support to the responding law enforcement. U.S. Representative Mike Collins, whose district includes the affected school, issued a statement praying for the victims and their families. However, Collins faced backlash from gun control advocates who criticized him for a 2022 campaign ad featuring him with an assault rifle and accusing him of endorsing gun violence. The ad included rhetoric against President Biden and threats related to the 2020 election. U.S. Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene also posted a statement on X, formerly Twitter, offering support to the victims and their families. Greene, like Collins, has faced criticism for previous campaign ads involving guns and for promoting unfounded conspiracy theories about other shootings, including the 2018 Parkland High School shooting, which she falsely claimed was a false flag operation to advance anti-gun legislation. Your thoughts and support can make a difference. Share your reflections on this tragedy and join us in honoring the memory of those lost.